video, I'm going to answer a question in more detail that I got from Keir Dorney about the ingredient peak O2. Now, the main ingredient in peak O2 is a fungus extract. Well, the product is actually a fungi blend because it's made of the fungus, cordyceps militaris in this case, along with the mushrooms, reishi, shiitake, king trumpet, lion's mane, and turkey tail. Now, what the research shows is that it provides some fairly impressive performance benefits. Subjects taking peak O2 blend uh, for three weeks increased their power by a little more than 15% and increased their time to exhaustion on a cycling exercise by 70 seconds. But before you go out there claiming it's the next creatine or beta alanine, let's hold up. Now, there's a few issues uh, that I have with the ingredient uh, and the research. And no, I'm not poking directly at the research. I'm just saying right now the ingredient is so uh, new that there's not a lot of research uh, been done yet. There's also not a lot of anecdotal uh, reports. What is the real world evidence? Sure, look, ingredients uh, can look impressive in the lab, but then when we test them in the real world, they just don't seem to pan out. And remember, with anything that's gonna improve performance, remember that the study subjects we're probably not quite as trained uh, as uh, most people watching this video. Also, they weren't taking any other supplements. So, if you're taking other supplements that also improve your power and your time to exhaustion, beta alanine, creatine, betaine, branched chain amino acids, citrulline malate, adding something to your supplement regimen like PICO2 might not further uh, increase uh, the benefits that you're getting from the other supplements. Remember when your uh, nutrition and your supplementation is already optimized, a lot of times adding in these other ingredients doesn't really pan out the way it does uh, in the research studies because again, those people are only taking that ingredient. They're not taking any other supplements or uh, their nutrition or even their training is really optimized to produce real performance results. And then the other issue I have is the ingredient uh, itself. It's a proprietary blend. Look, the ingredients are impressive. I've been writing about cordyceps for over a decade now. Uh, but what's different about this cordyceps is it's cordyceps militaris. It's a specific type that's been shown uh, to provide benefits. There's different types of cordyceps. They don't all work uh, to do uh, the same thing and they don't all have uh, benefits. But you may have seen some of my older articles on cordyceps talking about its ability to also enhance testosterone levels. And then all the different mushrooms are also impressive as they're all known to provide uh, different benefits. But we don't know what the amount is of each one of those uh, so that uh, people like myself can study an ingredient like that and uh, help to make it better by improving the science. If we're not talking about dosing on ingredients, then we're not enhancing the science. We're not pushing the science forward. We're not enabling consumers like you and me to be using these ingredients uh, better for better results if we're going to limit the uh, information that you put out there. Oh, here's my mushroom blend. I can't tell you how much shiitake I use or how much uh, lion's mane I use or cordyceps is in there, uh, but it works. Well, like I said, how do we uh, improve upon that? How do we take the science further if uh, we're keeping everything a secret. You see, this is one of uh, just many issues with the supplement industry. In an effort to make more money, it's essentially stifled uh, the growth of the science. So, one of the things that I'm trying to bring back. So I'm gonna say with Pico 2, before I'm even willing uh, to give it a try, I need to know how much of all the ingredients is in there. Not just the total, 2,000 milligrams of all those uh, different uh, ingredients, that's a proprietary blend. Now, I don't want it to sound like I'm coming down too hard on peak O2. It definitely has potential. However, 
like I said, my issues are uh, we really don't know enough about it uh, in the real world, how well it works uh, with athletes, high performance athletes, athletes taking other uh, ingredients and supplements. Does it really provide a true benefit uh, to someone like that versus study subjects? And it's a proprietary blend. Come on. Come on. Look. Enough of the proprietary blends. I'm trying to legitimize supplements by bringing back what supplements have always been. A science. A medicine. Proprietary blends, whether it's a product, whether it's an ingredient, are bad for the science. They're bad for the medicine. If supplements are truly going to start helping people, then we need to know precise doses on all ingredients. It's that simple. Give it a try, guys, and let me know how you like it. Sure, add it uh, to pre-gym before you work out and let me know. But again, I won't be impressed until it's no longer a proprietary blend. I hope this question helped anyone who's been wondering about Peak O2. As always, guys, stay gym. Army smart.